Hi everyone, it's me Larson here and we're going to do a really quick, quick, quick tutorial on um, this shabby chic flower. Now I had done one previously and if you go on my channel you will see um, one that I done last year and a couple years ago. There's several of them. Um, for this tutorial you're going to need some satin. You can use some, um, this is pieces from an old wedding dress that I cut up into circles. Um, I use the Sizzix circle die. Um, you're going to need a tea light candle or a lighter, uh, some lace. Again, this is um, this is a recycled piece of a dress that I had. Um, a felt circle, and you can use some organza that I also cut in different shapes. Um, some blings, and you can also use pearls if you want, um, and just kind of do a little cluster of those. You can use feathers. You can use just about anything. So let's get started. Um, as you can see, I've already had, when I do these, I cut lots and lots of little circles and I lay them out by the bigger size and then I go in with the medium size and keep going forward. Um, once I have everything all set, um, I organize it and start um, getting my edges here. Uh, worked on with the candle. Now what I do is I hold it on one end and you have to be really careful. You don't want to get it really, I'm going to show you what not to do. Um, let me take one that it's, okay so let's, here's this one, it's kind of funky. So this is what you don't want to do. You don't want to put it so close to the fire that you're going to burn your satin. See, you don't want that, okay. What you want to do is you want to go close in and sorry get some coffee in here you want to go close enough but not that close that you're going to burn it so you're kind of going to go carefully over until you get a really nice curving effect into it and um, you can hold it underneath there if you want it does get really really hot um, you can also take your lighter um, if you have an old curling iron you can also do that as well um, but you have to be really really careful um, someone said try a heat gun I haven't tried the heat gun um, but we'll try here we'll, we'll practice and see how that works I've never done the heat gun but this is just basically you're gonna curve it in see that not too close I don't want to go right into the flame I just want to kind of go in maybe about three quarters of an inch and try to move it around until we get a nice curving effect on there okay if you happen to get a little bit of a burnt edge don't be don't throw that away just cut up a little and you know move on or I like that distressed look because that you know that's where we practice on we can cut that up and then just do it again you know and just keep working on that so don't get discouraged I would practice around with um some pieces that you have around and then go from there and just keep moving around just to get a really nice curved feel of it okay and so that's basically that okay so let's get this one here um, again we're gonna go in I'm about three quarters let that satin kind of warm up. Let's see it starts to curl. And just keep rotating it. It can be a little frisky and go in closer. If you do that, just keep moving it around. Okay. What you also don't want is like right now, my flame is kind of jumpy, but that's because the AC is on and so it's kind of blowing into it. So you want to try to get it in. Um, so the flame is not flickering around a lot and jumping um, so you can get really better covered now make sure one side you don't get it like right there it's a little bit too much for me 
And I do like the burnt crisp look, but here we go. That's better. Um, try to get one side that's kind of flat so that you can grab it and put it onto your felt circle. You will need your glue. And now you can also sew these in if you want. Um, I'm not going to sew these. All right, so there we go. I'm going to blow this out. And I use different types of laces. Laces is the same thing. Just practice around organza. Make sure, like this is another one that I cut out from an old curtain. Make sure it's one of those types that will allow you to manipulate and curve it and burn the frayed edges, okay? All right, so let's build the flower. I'm going to turn this off over here. Okay, here's my felt. And you can go with bigger ones or you can go with smaller ones. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and make... small little pleat, pleat, pleat. And this is one way you can do it if you want to get like a little pleated. We're going to do this way first and then I'll show you the other way. That's why one side you don't want to mess with too much. Hold on. Another way you can do it is if you don't want to be so technical, which sometimes I don't. I just kind of pleat it and pop it in. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it or you can pleat it sew a stitch and just keep adding your petals um, like for instance you can um, pleat it sew a stitch keep your strand of thread there and then do another one and then just gather it up if that makes any sense to you entirely up to you This is where um, your pink little finger comes really in handy. It really does. Come very handy. Okay. So now you have that, and then you can grab your next size up and see I have them already sized up or you can do lace I'm gonna go with lace you can also use cheesecloth and you're gonna go randomly in between the two other petals and this part here like I said you can sew it and just keep gathering it up like that it's up to you whichever is easier for you um, if you're in a quick brush and you don't want to sew some people doesn't want to sew, they just want to strictly glue. Now we're going to go in between those two petals. That's up to you. You can do that. Again, we're going to go in between those two petals. Pinch it. Lay it in. Grab your little pink finger, kind of manipulate that in. And you can use pearl centers, pearl clusters. You can do all kinds of neat little things with these. I like using my little pink finger. And 
just kind of helps it. Another thing is, I'll show you another way of doing this too. Okay, now we're going to go with this. Um, you can just kind of throw them on. Odd. There's one. Just give you an idea. Put that one on top of there. Off center it. On top of that one. Let's put another one. Off center that. And just keep going on. Put two there. It's kind of still a little wet, so we're able to play around with it. The little pink figure is definitely a perfect thing for flowers. Um, you can take some organza and drop some in. It's your lifesaver. This little pink finger for flowers is truly a lifesaver. It's not going to help your fingers from not getting burnt trust me okay so we can have some organza there um, see the difference on that not pretty my lights not really there we go okay and you can take a piece of cheesecloth I love having cheesecloth in my flowers you can put it in the center right there and it's still a little wet and you can pop one of these in um, bling, backs of old earrings, um, buttons, um, pearls. You can take some feathers and um, pop one here and there. Entirely everything, whatever you want to put on these, you can. This feather is a little bit different. Sorry about that. But you can keep putting more feathers in there. See that? Okay, that's one way. Now, the other way. Um, let's take this one and we're going to off center a bigger one. Okay. And I'm going to off center this one. See that? And I didn't do that one. Let's see, do I have any bigger ones? Off center that. Off center that one. Okay, now we're going to do another one. Let's do lace. Let's do lace. Again, you're going to off center them so that you have a really nice feel to it. Okay. Take a smaller ones. Again, you want to off center these, throw it off. Do that. A smaller one here. Organza and the organza really curls up. So with the organza, what I recommend is that you're cautious with that because this one will burn up a lot faster than anything else. Okay. Now this one's a lot smaller.
Bring that. And then you can take some of these. And you can you can do one or two things. You can take um, a beading thread and just kind of do little um, what do you call it? Clusters. Um, I'm gonna put a little bead here. I don't have my little bead gripper. I wish I did right here, but my daughter has it. And you can do a little cluster like that. And you can pop those in. Let's see what else do I have. Let's see. That'd be cute right there. And that's just, these are available. These little plastic flowers are, um, is that a little plastic flower, acrylic? Um, you can get those at Creating with Details and you can pop that right in the center. I like putting in cheesecloth. This gives it a really nice finished shabby look. You could put also um, some yarn threads. I've done those as well. Um, you can pop those in there as well. You can pop that in there in the center. And that's a cute little flower you can make as well. And the other way is, like I said, you can sew it. Um, and sewing it, basically, you're just going to take, um, put your thread in. And you're going to run it through. And we'll do that. Let's, let me get a piece of thread. Okay, so now we have our needle and thread. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the bigger petals here and we're going to kind of make a small little tiny pleat just pleat like almost like a fan and go ahead and sew all the way through let me I know I shouldn't be blowing candles out but hey whatever it is what it is okay so we're going to do that and get all our bigger petals into a pleat and remember, make sure you leave one that is not fully burnt at the end. I'll do about, I don't know, five. And there's another one. the same size double checking because I might have messed up oh, I mean, I'm a little cuckoo's for cocoa puffs um, oh, it's this one and now I leave a side in so that it's easier to make your little pleat And this one's five and we're gonna go ahead what the heck we're gonna do six and then we'll just join them together at the beginning of the first one sure you have your first and your two your first and your last together so you can do a little quick lock stitch and I just made a lock stitch there now I'm going to trim that off So 
then you can kind of get those see and you have a nice little pleat and then you can glue that down and you can put your little feather down before anything let's do that mess with glue and it seems like it's like so clingy lately and get your petals all nice and separated and put a glob back here can use your little pink finger hold it in place and you can do this while the glue is kind of still wet and shape it in okay all right and then you can go in with your little lace and you can just build it on you can go ahead and keep doing it with your thread, but I find it's just a lot easier, ladies, if we just keep doing this way. All this glue web just getting on my nerves. Must be this glue sticks because I don't think I've ever seen anything. Look at that. So massive. Okay. Oh, it's still a little wet. Get your next size up, which is this one. And again, you can go in here. Sorry, I'm chewing my gum really loud, probably. Again, make a little small pleat. I'm going to go ahead and do five probably. You can just keep doing this until you have your little flower built. Now I did notice, um, make sure that if, like, I use a recycled dress, some satins are easier to maneuver um, than others. If your satin is really, really um, heavy, it's going to take a lot longer to um, curl it with the heat. So what you might want to do is just check the thread count on your satin. Make sure it's not really, really heavy um, because otherwise, especially if you're um, new to making these type of flowers, maybe get a satin. If this one's really, um, there's a big difference. Um, see, this one's really lightweight. This is the bridal. So I kind of cut two. I noticed that. Um, two different ones one sticker than the other and the bridal tends to be a lot thicker so if for these i would probably even though i was able to maneuver the satin from the wedding dress it's going to take a lot longer your chances of it you you might get a little bit more don't get don't get discouraged um your chances of getting um those little burnt edges are higher because you're gonna have to get closer into that flame because it's so thick the thread count is it's heavy so um, 
I'm just warning you get a lightweight if you're especially if you're new to these kind of flowers um, get a lightweight and do it that way okay so there's that and then you can pop that in there again use your little pink finger to maneuver these pretty okay now you can add more of this one and we're going to probably put these two little circles that we have left here again I like to use my finger it saves me from getting burnt I'm going to use some more Ganza let's see do I have any more here yeah, I do thought I did thought I burnt more some reason this table I don't know why I removed the, the I think it's because I removed the bottom um, drawers that I had the cabinet so it's a lot it's going it's echo down there it's empty underneath my desk and so i think that's why it's making a really loud echo loud loud noise okay so here i have this yarn you can purchase at your yarn section you can wrap this up just like that and put it right in the middle of the glob goodness I've done a video on that one as well. Get a nice fray in there. And then just pop in a little pearl or a bead. And voila. And just kind of there's your flower. That gorgeous anyway that is it for this tutorial ladies i did try the heat gun on the satin it didn't work um but um i think i want to try to see i don't have a straightening iron or curling iron i'm going to see if i find one at the goodwill or something because I'm, I'm not one to curl my hair um to see if it works um you know to to use a straightening or a curling iron to burn the edges um so anyway, until next time, ladies, I hope this tutorial uh, was helpful for those of you. But those are gorgeous. They're luscious. Um, you can make little pearl clusters of your own different ways. Um, I hope that this was informative. If you have any questions, you know where to find me. Bye-bye.